Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 64. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 5. If you're in the uh, class, just go to our class, Chapter 5 website. Hey, binomial distribution. We got to talk about what happens to the distribution as n changes and as the probability changes. And then I want to show you a couple other charting uh, uh, tricks here. Now here we have n equals 5, so we have 5 trials. Probability of success in each one is 0.5. I'm going to change this to 0.1. Now notice we'll talk about the probability first. Point one, it looks like um, it's got some positive skew, right? Most all the values are here, but maybe there's a few uh, big ones up here pulling the mean up. So uh, we'll change this to point two. Oh, it's uh, getting less so. The, the highest frequency is right here now. I'm going to go to point four. Whoa, almost looking bell-shaped, and point five. Anytime you get... Um, 0.5, this thing's going to be perfectly uh, bell shaped. Anything below that, whoops, anything below that, 0.5 will have a positive skew. Obviously, then that means anything above 0.5, if I put 0.6 here, start to get uh, some negative skew. So I'll do 0.9 here. The other thing, so that's the, as you change P, how this distribution changes. The other thing, is if you change n, we'll go from 5 to 10, and then uh, 20. Oops, that's um, the p. I'm going to uh, change this back to 4. Oh, yeah, so notice, uh, again, maybe it has uh, a positive skew. There's a couple values up here pulling the mean up. But as we move up to 20 and then 30, it starts to get bell-shaped again. So that's just a little bit about uh, how those two things affect the distribution. Let's go to our next sheet tab here. And I want to talk about the function, the binome dist here. How does it calculate it? Well, we've already talked a lot about that, and we've even uh, seen um, how it calculates. Ah, but I want to totally visually see when you put that 1 in. That means cumulative. So we have a nice little chart here, and I'm going to change this x. And watch what happens to this chart here. So now I'll change this to 4. right? So we have n trials, 0.5 probability, and now we're asking the binome dist get the cumulative for 4. What it always does is it goes from negative infinity to this 4 right here. So if I put a 5 here, watch, this will change when I hit enter. So I've just added to an extra column here. Uh, here's all the probabilities, so they're all blue. This one I added an, an extra column that just shows the probability 5 or less. And that's the default for binome dist. It's always when you're doing cumulative, going to go whatever x you put in and less, all that probability. That's why in earlier videos when we wanted the upper end, we had to do 1 minus the binome dist. All right, uh, let's do this um, 8. Right, so then it's going to calculate all those red ones, add them up, and sure enough, it did right there. Now, I want to show you how to do this. This is going to be a helpful trick, not only if you're playing around with the charts and you want to see visually, but later when we do uh, normal distribution, we'll also have a similar situation where we're going to ha have the functions will always go from the lower end uh, up to whatever the x is, cumulatively adding all of the probabilities. Let's go over to this next sheet, and I want to show you how to build a formula to do that. So any x you put in here, it'll show you just those probabilities. We're going to use the if function equals if. Now, the if function, we saw this one other time in, in this class. It's, this is not required for this class, but it is a great trick exactly in this situation. Uh, if just has a logical test. Now, a logical test. What are the only two answers for a logical test? True or false. So we're going to put build a logical test in here, which just means is this cell greater than or equal to that, or is that cell less than or equal to that. But that logical test will only come out either true or false. Now, the rest of the if function is easy. 
the logical test is usually the hard part. The rest of it's easy. It says, hey, what value do we want me to put in this cell if this comes out to be true? And this argument is going to be, hey, what value do you want to put in this cell if the logical test comes out false? That's why it says value of true, value of false. So here's our logical test. Remember, that's our x. So we're going to ask the question. I'm going to click relative cell reference, 2 to my left. And I'm going to say, is this less than or equal to? this. Now I'm going to have to lock this with the F4 key. But look at that. As we copy this down, uh, we've, we've seen, we've done um, numerous logical formulas already, but this is the first time or second time we've done it in the if. As we copy this down, we'll always ask, is the x less than or equal to 5? So right, uh, all, the, all of these will get a true, this will get a false, this will get a false, right? So logical test, then you type a comma, value if true. Well, what do we want in this column if this x is less than or equal to this 5 up here? Oh, we want the probability relative cell reference 1 to my left. Otherwise, what do we want? If false, I'm going to show you the, the um, syntax for blank, means show nothing. Double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for blank. Close parentheses, and that's it. This is the value that's going in the cell if it's false, which is blank. This is the value that's going in if it's true, whatever the probability went to my left. And there's the logical test. Control Enter. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. Now, let's. I have some conditional formatting that's showing you the red. But let's just test this. Let's put a 3 here. Let's put a 1 here. Right. Now, I want to build a chart. I'm actually going to start just with this one right here. We've done this a couple different ways, highlighting this and this. But we always have to just delete that. So why not just highlight this right here? I'm going to go to Insert, Column, and then that one. Ah, but we already know by now if you have uh, in 2007, there's a keyboard shortcut for the default chart. And my default chart, and by default, your computer comes with Column Chart as default. So we can use Alt F1. Um, I'm going to click on this and hit the F2 key, which puts my cursor up there, and then type equals. And then I'm going to click right there. That actually is a formula, a label, a text formula that's linked to this information here. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to get rid of this legend. I'm going to immediately go up to design, because I know that this is not right right here, because it always puts it in by default, but it doesn't know that there's a 0 there. All right, so I'm going to go to Design, Select Data. I'm going to click Edit on my one and only uh, data set here. And then I'm going to highlight that cell, Control-Shift-Down arrow, and then click OK. Click OK. okay so now I have the correct uh, uh, axis here. And now I want to put a label here. And it's just going to be a simple one. Go up to Layout. And we're going to go Axis Titles, and I want Horizontal Below. And I'm just going to type X. We don't have, this is just a generic chart. I don't have like the defined variable like we did in earlier ones. And then Enter. So I've labeled that prop properly. Now I'm going to leave those lines and that probability there. We'll just assume that, that we don't have to put a label there. You could put probability, but uh, we're not going to right now. And then finally, I want to add. And what we want to do is we want to add this. And then we're going to have to mess around with it to get it to sit on top. Uh, let's go ahead and click on our chart and go up to Design, Select Data. I'm going to click Add. The series name, I'm going to click right there. Series values, this is an array uh, equals array symbols 1. Sometimes that gets in the way. So what I always do is I highlight it and delete it so it doesn't mess up. <coughs> Very carefully highlight all the values, including all those blanks right now, and then click OK, click OK. Now we need to do a couple things. I want to highlight on the red. And uh, you can see right there that that one's there, too, even though it's really small. You also could go up to uh, Layout and select all the different parts of your chart that way. And so selecting this one right here would select it. But then I want to. Control-1, or right-click, Format Data Series. Because what we want is we want the overlap. We want it to be 100% overlapped. That means the columns are sitting on top of each other. And then click OK. 
And that is how you can have um, two data sets that normally you'd want them separated, right? But in this case, we all, since they're different colors, we want the red to be on top to, to show us visually that it's doing it cumulative. Hey, let's try this up here. Let's do a three. Let's do a four. Right, and uh, that's going to be a useful trick not only for this chapter but on a bunch of chapters coming up when we're doing probability, uh, doing area charts, column charts, or whatever. It'll help us illustrate to ourselves uh, what cumulative properties we're interested in. All right, uh, when we come back, we have one last uh, video uh, on the Poisson distribution. All right, see you next video.